Today I'm going to show you how to create a Google form and use it for uh, various purposes in your classroom. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your Google Drive and you're going to click New and then go to More and select Google Forms. You're going to title it, whatever your title is, and you want to make sure you title it up here as well. So the first thing I like to do is customize the theme. So click on the palette and Google Forms gives you all these great templates that you can use. So you pick the one that's relevant for your topic. I'm going to pick this book right here and select it. And then you have some other design options here that you can choose from. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to look at my settings and I'm going to decide do I want to collect email addresses do I want to restrict to users in Fairfax County Schools? Now, if you're surveying parents, for example, you would uncheck this. Um, but if you're working with students, you definitely want to keep this checked. Um, and if it's an assessment, you want to limit it to one response and you don't want to allow students to edit after they submit. If I click the presentation button, I can show the progress bar for students if I want. I can shuffle the question order and I can also give them a response when they submit the form. This is where I can turn it into an assessment. So if I want to make it a quiz, I turn that on and then I decide do I want it to grade immediately after each submission. If it's a multiple choice, uh, this is probably a good option. If it's an open-ended one, you probably want to check later after manual review. And then do you want students to be able to see missed questions, correct answers, and point values? Correct answers may not be the best idea because they can share that with um, students who maybe haven't taken the assessment. And then you're going to click Save. Okay, now you can start adding your questions. So you really should get in the habit of having the first question be the student name. I made the mistake of not doing that the first time I did an assessment using Google Forms and I didn't know who submitted which response. Um, so here I would require the question. I don't really need an answer key for this question because there's no right answer for it. So I'm going to leave that blank. All right, now I want to add my next question or my first real question and I want it to be multiple choice. So I type my question in and I add my options and I just keep clicking to add more options and then I want to make this required and I want to give a correct answer so I click on answer key and I'm gonna pick spring and then I want to give it a point value of 10 points and then here I can add answer feedback so I can give kids kind of a clue as to why the correct answer is correct. And of course, spring is the best season. And then I save. Now it'll automatically um, check this uh, answer for me. So when I when the student submits it, it'll automatically uh, let them know if they got that right or wrong. Okay, I'm going to click done. Now here I have the option of duplicating the question. So if I have a bunch of multiple choice questions, I could just duplicate and change the questions and change the responses. I can delete the question if I don't want it anymore. And then here I can add different types of questions. I'm going to show you the different types. Short answer, paragraph, these are very similar. It depends on how much you want the students to write. Uh, check boxes, this is if you want students to select multiple choices. Uh, same with drop down. You can upload a file. You can add a linear scale if you want them to say on a scale of one to five, how do you feel about this topic? Um, you can add a multiple choice grid or a checkbox grid. And I'll show you ex an example of uh, one of those in just a bit. So those are your question options. This is again where you make it required. And then you have some other options here. You can import a question from a previous Google form and it will actually pull up some of your most recent Google forms and you would just select the form and you would literally choose the question that you want. You also have the option of adding a title and a description. 
So if you want to give directions to students, you could do that here. You could add an image and then you could add questions relating to that image. You could add a video and again add questions relating to that video. And then you can add a section. So if you have different uh, topics, you could divide those up into sections. Okay, when you're ready to share the form, you're going to click the send button and this horizontal paper clip. I like to shorten the URL and then you copy it. And now you can paste it in your Google Classroom, in your Blackboard, um, wherever you need. And then you also have the option of adding collaborators. So if you're working with colleagues on this, you would invite them to collaborate with you and then they can work on the form as well and they'll also see the responses. So let's talk about the responses. Um, you would click here for the responses and I'm actually going to fill this form out so that you see what the responses look like. And oops, and I see now that I'm previewing this, I have this extra question here that I need to delete. Uh, so I'm gonna go and delete that. But just so you can see, I can view my score and I got a 10 out of 10 because I got the answer right. Um, so here I'm gonna go back to my form and I'm gonna delete this extra question that I don't want. And I'm gonna show you what the responses look like. So here I can see a bar graph of the responses. I see some different uh, options there. Um, and then I can click on this spreadsheet and I can see, I can create a spreadsheet and I can see all of the responses in this spreadsheet. And this is really valuable if you are turning something into a quiz because then you can, you know, you can easily see uh, what student, what score students received um, and you can easily put it into your gradebook. And it's taking a minute to load. There it is. And you can see my score right there. Okay, I'm going to show you some different uses for Google Forms now. So this is an example of a pre-reading Google Form, and this was something that I created when I taught English. Uh, before we read To Kill a Mockingbird, I had I embedded this video here, I had students watch the video, and then I had them answer questions about the video. Then I went into section two, and we talked about stereotyping, and I had open-ended questions more videos, then I had the um, agree or disagree question, so that was that Likert scale that I was talking about. Um, so I had a variety of types of questions, and this was really just to uh, give them some background knowledge on the book. Okay, this is an example that Greg Miller, our student activities director, created, um, and this was just to, uh, to kind of get kids engaged since they're not gonna be playing spring sports um, to give them an opportunity to add a picture um, and to kind of reflect on their previous seasons. So to survey students, uh, this is an example that Jen Shamil used in her anatomy and physiology class and it was a reflection on the quarter. So you can use it for you know uh, pre-reading but you can also use it uh, for reflecting on learning. And you'll see here she has those, um, the grid questions here, where you put the, the category on the left and then the different levels at the top. And here is a reading check. So this was an actual quiz. And you can see, I'm gonna show you the spreadsheet version here. And you can see how easy it is to see. I've got the name, I've got the score. And then here I can also see, if I look at the responses, I can see you know, the, the number of students who got the answer right. And so if I need to go back and reteach, it makes it really easy for that. And then finally, um, Google Forms has an awesome template gallery that you can check out and you can use their templates for exit tickets, for assessments, for worksheets, for blank quizzes, and so on. So that is how you use 